Okay, it might be scruffy, but this is one of my favorite places in the whole world. And I'm going to show you something very special indeed. Hi everybody, David Hopper here and welcome to my outdoor painting and sculpting studio. This is where I create my own pieces of artwork, but it's also where I restore other pieces of art. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to bring this painting back to life. I'm also going to ask you your opinion. What do you think of this picture? For me, I absolutely adore it with a passion because it's by an artist I've admired for a very long time. Born in Holland in 1939, this is by Jacqueline de Young. It is modernist, it's 1960s, it's full of passion, vibrancy and life. It's worth pretty good money, but it's the kind of thing in this state that you could very easily find at a car boot fair for no money, it's being sold by someone who didn't understand it or, let's be honest, hated it because half of you watching this right now probably hate this picture with passion as much as I love it with passion. But as it is, it's pretty unsaleable. Let me show you the condition right now and then I'm going to tell you how I'm going to bring it back to life. I'm not going to touch the painting, that would be bonkers, but I'm going to prepare the frame and the mount to get it gallery ready, even top London auction ready. So take a really good look at the picture and then I'm going to strip it and I'm going to restore it. Tell me what you think, put your comments down below. So here we have the picture. And if you see eroticism, desire, violence and humour, then you are a top flight art critic because Jacqueline de Young is known for all of these things in oil, on paper. But look at it, it's manky. The signature is there on down the bottom right, but you can't see it. The frame, the mount, the glass, they're all filthy and they need a light restoration. And what about the back of the painting? And I know exactly what you're thinking. That looks manky. Well, you'd be bang on. It really is awful. Stained cardboard, rusty nails. It's been damp. It's pulling away from the frame. Droopy, saggy bit of string. It looks pretty rotten, but it says quite a lot about the picture. So now let's take a look at the inscription. So top right, translated, this says library above the fireplace. So you can assume that the painting was destined originally, when new, to be hung in a library above the fireplace. To the left hand side it's inscribed J. Thor Jensen and an address in Copenhagen. So this may well have been the original owner. De Young exhibited an awful lot in Denmark. It could have even been the gallery itself. But the most important bit of information is bottom right hand corner. There we have it, Jacqueline de Young. And the title of the painting is Dark Night. So there you have it, as monkey as you might think it looks, and I agree with you, it really does. It's vital to keep that board as it is, in ropey condition, because this is as important as the painting itself. So now you know it's called Dark Night. Tell me what you see in the painting. Remembering that Jacqueline de Young was known for painting pictures featuring violence, humour, desire and eroticism. She was also a figurative painter, so figures, people, body parts appear in her paintings. To me, I can see fingers there. Can you see fingers? I mean, we can all see different things in modernist pictures, apart from the staining on the mount, which I'm going to fix in a minute. Stick with me. Keep on viewing. There's an eye to me. There's another eye to the left hand side. And remembering that Pablo Picasso once said that every child is an artist. The problem is when they grow up, they forget how to paint. So you might be thinking this is quite naive and childlike. But I think you're wrong. So much more than that is going on in this picture. And I think it's one of those pictures that you can look at for hours, days and years ahead and see something new and fresh. Look at it 
and meditate. This is modern art and it's gorgeous. I understand that you may not agree with me, of course, and I don't care, but I'm now going to strip it and then I'm going to restore it and hopefully convince you that, well, you should love this piece of art. Let's then start with the glass, simply cleaning the glass. I mean, it hasn't been cleaned in all its life, 50, 55 years of grime and muck. And really, I shouldn't be showing you these things because really what I'm doing is I'm showing you just how easy it is very often to transform pieces of art or antiques, double, treble, quadruple their value with no effort whatsoever. So stick with me. This is the dull, boring bit. I'm just going to clean the glass with a spray. I mean, just take a look at it first of all. Why hasn't it been cleaned? Well, I shouldn't have spoken so soon. You'll find out why this hasn't been cleaned in a moment. It is absolutely monkey. I've never known a piece of glass so caked on with grime. I'm just going to give it a squirt. I'm, I've, I've run out of glass cleaner, so I'm just going to use this Dettol thing, surface cleaner. It'll do the same job. Just blast it on. Yeah, I'll do that first. Uh, paper towels, top tip, use paper towels when cleaning glass, not dusters, because generally dusters and other cleaning cloths, no matter how clean you think they are, look at that, look at that grime, look at that, it's absolute bonkersness. Yeah, so um, cloths are always dirty, just use paper towel. The thing is I'm short of paper towel as well, I'll probably run out of that now. Right, let's just fast forward this bit, because I was here for quite some time. The grime and mud and muck has been pretty well like salt glazed onto the glass, which is why, quite obviously, nobody has successfully cleaned it in all its life. Some areas are baked, like it's been just like caked onto the glass. So just let the liquid soak in a bit. Scrape it with your nails. Listen. It's like grit. It's grit on glass. Actually, you know, when you're painting or sculpting or even cleaning, you know, watch out for glass, quite obviously, with your fingers. But using your fingers is often a better way because you can feel where the grime is. And when you're painting, you really get, I don't know, a sense of the texture of the picture you're creating. Anyway, that's another story. Scrape it off. This is going to take a while. And three weeks later, all right, a slight exaggeration, but the glass is finally done. So then what about the painting itself? Well, take a look at it. In itself, there's nothing wrong with it. So never fall into this trap of thinking that you can improve another artist's work by touching it up in areas. Even if there are bits of flaky paint missing, always leave them alone or consult a restorer. Don't be tempted to get your paint brushes out and improve someone else's work. That work there by Jacqueline de Young cannot be improved. The only thing we can do is lift the paper up because you can see it's dropped below the mount missing off the signature. So I'll show you how I do that in a minute. It's pretty simple, but let's talk about painting. I want to get painting. I am going to paint some of it. This is what I'm going to paint. I'm going to paint the mount. Take a look at this. This is the original mount that Jacqueline put on the painting in the 1960s. And it's very grimy. It's stainy, probably damp, mouldy and looking pretty grotty. Now, when I first saw it, I just thought to myself, I'll recut a new mount, replace it with a nice cream or white mount, job done. But look closely. You can see that Jacqueline de Young actually painted this piece of card when new. Jacqueline is known as a painterly painter. Now this means that, well, just take a look at the work. She's almost thrown the paint at the paper. So she is 
the exact opposite to a fine landscape artist who works in minute detail and very carefully. Jacqueline de Young and artists like her, and I include myself, throw paint all over the place. That's part of the pleasure. And so she thought she'll paint the mount. That's normal. That's great. All I'm going to do is repaint the mount. I'm not trying to pretend to be Jacqueline de Young at all. I'm just going to brighten that up. So I'm going to do what I love doing. Let's get rid of the painting for now in the nicest possible way. And get painting. Right, so titanium white acrylic paint. I go through this stuff like water. Throw it around, baby. Give it a good shake. And, uh, yeah. There we are. Gosh. I don't really clean up very well after myself, and so the paint is wet around the outside edge when I put the lid on and then it dries and I can't get the lid off. Other artists clean up after themselves. That's not really my style. Here we go. Oh, something very satisfying. Oh, <laughs> it's all over my foot. Never mind. <laughs> there you go. Very satisfying about blobbing the paint around there. Good old painterly brush. Look at that. That's seen some action. And you don't have to be too precious. You know, Jacqueline is painterly. Let's just be painterly. Let's just get it on. Doesn't matter about lines, brush strokes. That's what this painting is all about. This will just brighten it up no end. And the good thing with acrylic, actually, it dries incredibly quickly, unlike oils, which can take an absolute eternity and are very annoying. I love acrylic. See this area here? See how grimy and dirty it is? going to swap over. This is better. Being right-handed, it's much easier to go at this angle. Paint on hands. Wonderful. I don't think I own a piece of clothing that doesn't have a bit of paint on it. Every bit of paint tells a story. Some successful, some not so. And if you're a painter, you know what I mean. Because some pictures work really well, some go in the bin. But they will always leave a mark on clothing somewhere. Gorgeous. And it's really almost done. I mean, I let that dry, take no time at all, and then I will give it another go over. Fast and furious. Just let it air dry there for a little while. And to finish the job, I've got everything I need. There we have a claw hammer, bit of sellotape, commercial stuff, that very good, some tack scissors. And there's the painting. Now take a better look at it here. And you know, the thing that we were missing before is that bottom right hand corner, there's the signature. It's a fundamental part of the value in this painting, and it was pretty well chopped off. But it's important, it's on show. OK, a very quick repair. See how loose the painting is from the back? Just that the old 1960s cellar tape has literally disintegrated. So you use this commercial stuff, double-side it, and it'll keep it there now for the next 50 years. Nice and secure so it doesn't drop from the mount 
once it's in the frame like it did before so there's the mount freshly painted get it lined up now you'll find with these things because this is a one-off piece of art the dimensions the measurements are all just a cock really it's not perfect it's not a mass-produced commercial thing so you'll try and just have to get it as best as you possibly can stick it down the back making sure that of course the signature now is well and truly on show so again just get this commercial tape out see there's the original tape it's just lost all its stickiness very very simple repairs which I think you'll find when you see the end result make all the difference. And it takes no time. Right, let's have a look. Perfect. Nice and aligned, you can see the signature. No blank space anywhere, just check the back again. Yeah, it looks all tight. The last thing you want is to put it in the frame and just to drop out. Right, okay. Let's put the mounted picture on the easel, just nice and safe for a moment, and grab hold of the clean glass in the frame. Look at that, you can see through it. Remarkable. Make sure there's no bits on the top of it. I really wish this was a lot harder. It would make me look a bit more impressive. Anyway, bung it in the frame. Just check there's no dead flies, bits of nails, dust and grime stuck between the glass and the mount. I've done that so many times the back on making sure that it's the right way up so all the inscriptions are in the right place double check again no dead moths looking good now get some tacks this takes a while so I'll speed it up so there you have it a very light and quick restoration carried out on an original 1960s Jacqueline de Jong painting on paper. But tell me, how much do you think this thing is worth? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Would you have it at home on your walls? You know that I, I, I adore this painting. I adore the artist. She's in her 80s now. She's still working, exhibiting, and she works out of Holland and Paris, I believe. But how much do you think an original Jacqueline de Young is worth? Well, I'm gonna give you some figures here, but put your answers down below. Tell me what you think. A big canvas exhibited at a special exhibition somewhere could easily make 10,000 pounds in a good auction or a good gallery. This is lesser, it's smaller, it's just on paper, but it's still really good. And I think, tell me what you think, I think it's worth £1,500 and I actually think that's pretty good value for money because prices are only going one way and that is up which is why for me I'm going to keep it on my wall and enjoy it for a little while and think about it and look at it and I can tell you that she inspires me as a painter so just for that she's worth every penny but more importantly what do you think? Let me know down below. Well, I hope that was relatively interesting. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and all of that. I'm David Harper. Until next time, goodbye.